Hey everyone, welcome back to Cruising with Matthew and episode 1 of my Piano Aurora vlog series. In this episode, I'm going to be talking all about Embarkation Day and our very first day at sea on board Aurora, so I really hope you enjoy this video. So me and my two friends, Zoe and Georgia, decided to celebrate the end of three years of university studying biomedical science by going on a cruise. And I was so excited to show them why I love cruising so much, but also a little nervous. Now we decided to travel down to Southampton on the day. However, we did get our time slightly wrong and we ended up arriving in Southampton at about half nine in the morning. However, the earliness was definitely compensated by our first views of Aurora. My two friends couldn't believe the sheer size of her. So as we decided to park up and Zoe decided to get some last minute essentials from the shopping centre, me and Georgia ended up going to the top floor of the John Lewis department and found a perfect vantage spot to see Aurora docked at the Mayflower terminal. So at this point everything definitely felt a little bit real and it wasn't too long before we were driving to the terminal getting ready to check in. Now embarkation was really smooth and we almost didn't really have chance to process that we were finally at the terminal before we were getting on board. Now unfortunately I lost some of my photos and videos from the embarkation day because of a corruption on my phone so that is always why you back up your photos. However there's plenty left so don't worry. So after getting on board and all three of us pretty much standing with our mouths dropped open at the gorgeous atrium on board Aurora we decided to make our way up to the buffet for a bite to eat. Having been on Oriana previously there were many similarities to Aurora and I definitely got a deja vu moment when we walked to find some outdoor seating and I looked over the tiered stern. It had probably been about 10 years since I'd seen a tiered stern like Aurora's so it brought back a lot of memories from Oriana and none of us could really believe that it was actually happening and with our exams finishing quite close to the holiday we hadn't really had chance to process and in no time at all we received an announcement that the cabins were ready and me and Georgia dropped off our bags while Zoe decided to have a nap because she had been driving for four hours since about five o'clock so that was fair enough so me and Georgia ended up going to the very top of the ship and worked our way down and you could really tell that Aurora was a traditional ship she had tons of open deck space and her interiors were really classically designed obviously the tiered stern had to be a highlight but I also loved the look of the crow's nest and looking out we got beautiful views of Cunard's Queen Mary 2 as well as Norwegian Spirit which was in port with us. It was also really refreshing to see a wide promenade deck as well because as much as I loved going on Britannia of the year before I did really miss the promenade deck and it really makes me feel like I'm on a ship and another highlight which you don't see in ships these days is the fact that we could walk all the way from the promenade deck right to the top of the ship thanks to the tiered stern so it really meant that you were able to connect to the sea and we went back to the cabin to unpack our stuff and prepare for the muster drill and it was definitely a selfie worthy moment after we'd all managed to fit our life jackets on after a quick but thorough safety demonstration from the ship's crew the captain announced that we were ready to get underway so we rushed back to our cabin and prepared for the sail away now this is really when the stern of aurora comes into its own because it was the perfect place for a sail away there was loads of people milling around having a few drinks the entertainment team was dancing away and it just really gave a nice sense of occasion and it wasn't long before aurora thrusted off from the mayflower terminal and made her way along the solent and and because we left first we got some fantastic sail buys. Now I always love ship spotting whilst in port and you don't normally get to sail this close to other ships so it was really cool to sail past Norwegian Cruise Line's Norwegian Spirit which was probably a similar size to Aurora and loads of passengers gave us a wave as we sailed past and as we continued to make our way down the Solent we were greeted by the mighty Queen Mary 2. Now QM2 always seems to be around when I'm in port so it was quite nice to see her but this time we heard her. I completely understand when people say that QM2's horn is rather loud, as you can tell. So after taking copious amounts of pictures of QM2, we continued our way down the Solent. So after finishing our drink, we decided to have a walk around the promenade and sit and relax 
as Aurora passed the Isle of Wight and sailed into the English Channel. By this time, it was time to get ready for our first dinner on board Aurora, and we couldn't wait. So after a quick change of clothes, it was casual night this evening, we decided to go for a pre-dinner cocktail in the crow's nest. And I'm really glad that we did this because I don't think people had found this place yet, so it was quite quiet. And also we were greeted to some beautiful views of the southeast coast as Aurora made her way into the Atlantic. Now, dinner was absolutely incredible. Now, what really made this first day even better was the fact that as we stepped out after dinner we were greeted to the most gorgeous sunset and I think my friends saw why I love cruising so much because you don't get views like this that often so it was a really nice end to the night and definitely set us up for all the excitement and fun to come. Although by this time we were quite tired so after a quick drink in the cabin we decided to go to bed. Now as we woke up you could definitely tell that the Bay of Biscay was making itself known with Aurora starting to roll from left to right quite significantly. This was quite weird because I'm used to the ship pitching but I think this is because for the first time I was on a ship that was sailing into the Bay of Biscay not skirting around it. So looking at the webcam you could tell the weather wasn't going to be that favourable but we were going to make the most of it. However, even in this wind, we went into the deserted terrace pool at the stern of the ship and luckily the pool was heated so we were able to swim around for probably about an hour alternating between the pool and the hot tub. The only thing that wasn't enjoyable was getting out, not something I would recommend. But it was lots of fun and although lots of crew and passengers looked at us quite perplexed, it was really good fun. And after numerous coffees and me wandering around the ship and taking pictures of this fabulous ship's interior, we were ready to enjoy the very first former night. Now this was the captain's gala night. Now me, Zoe and Georgia love dressing up formally. It was nice to see my two friends not in lab coats for once but in long dresses and then we made our way to Carmen's Lounge. It was quite nice because it felt like you had quite an intimate setting and there were people going around with drinks so it was a really fun atmosphere and Captain Neil Turnbull was absolutely incredible. He made everyone laugh and did advise everyone that because this was his last cruise we would most certainly be arriving into Southampton at the end of our cruise on time. He continued this throughout the entire cruise and always made us laugh. If you ever have him as your captain you're going to be in for a treat. Tonight being the first former night was also the gala night on board Aurora and the food definitely didn't disappoint and I'm always happy when there is the beef wellington on offer so that was extremely yummy and as we half walked half rolled to the theatre we got to enjoy our first show by the headliners theatre company and this was Destination Dance and what a way for them to introduce themselves they somehow managed to seamlessly blend so many genres of music all while you had these fantastic dancers going through some really complex choreography and at one point doing somersaults and things like that on a ship that was still moving a fair bit as we transited through the Bay of Biscay. It was a fantastic experience and I'm never disappointed with the headliners. We then stopped off for a drink at the Crow's Nest once again. However, we were still playing catch up, I think. So as Zoe and Georgia made their way back to the cabin, I couldn't help but step out and take a few pictures of Aurora at dark. And luckily the weather was starting to settle a bit. So we were really looking forward to visiting our first destination, the Spanish port of Santander. I really hope you enjoyed episode one of my Aurora vlog series. If you have, please like and subscribe because it's always appreciated and take a look at some of my other social media sites. The links are in the description below. I can't wait to see you all in my next video. So until next time, this is Cruising with Matthew and thank you so much for watching.